Salam guys, so we are in Tehran and we have just stepped out to have some lunch before we explore the city. So our first welcome to you into this video is with a falafel sandwich. And we just got offered Coca-Cola mm -hmm. by kind ladies from Tehran. Introduce them. Video is okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Salam. Salam. Hello. Salam. Hi. India. They are playing Hindi songs now and they just offered us cola. <laughs> <laughs> Which song is it? Mm. 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 Yeah. Oh, the old ones. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Super. <laughs> Antiques everywhere. See your booty. So our first stop was actually the Golistan Palace which is inside this gate uh, but the ticket cost is really expensive it's like $28 and also a part of it is closed for renovation so we just got to see it from outside. Uh, in, in Tehran, there are actually quite a few such palaces, so we are hoping to catch another one in the area for a lot cheaper. But, yeah. uh, and also filming here is a little difficult because we just met a policeman who saw yeah. our camera and he was like, what are you doing? Yeah. And his and face was really it, scary. It makes no sense because I told him it's off, it was off. He just saw the camera in the hand and he was very grumpy about it. Wherever we have filmed till now, I think we've never really been as anxious as we've been yeah. here in Iran. And in Tabriz it was fine because I think people were smiling and responding more, even if they were just seeing us vlogging. Here in Tehran we are a little more like concerned because it's more strict. This is the seat of the government and things are definitely more conservative here. So that's our impression but uh, it does look beautiful inside. There's a lot of uh, tile work and arches and uh, beautiful gardens. And this is the weather which Namit likes. Cloudy. Look, with a chance nice. of meatballs. <laughs> chance of? Meatballs, the movie. Cloudy with a chance ah. of meatballs. Okay. Where are we going next? So, we'll walk through the bazaar. I heard there's a bazaar nearby. Yeah, let's go. Can you give that one for this much? Very little. Only that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So we're just getting some very special nuts here. It's all saffron flavor, yes? With saffron, yes. Yeah. Thank you. So dry fruits here are very popular, so we thought we'll give it a try. So this is the mixture of almonds, pista, uh, what is this, chickpeas? Hazelnut. Hazelnut. And uh, there are four Cashew nuts. And cashew nut. I'm gonna give it a try. Mm. It's crunchy and it's Oops. highly flavored. It's really nice. Some protein. It has a mild taste of saffron in it. Otherwise, it's pretty uh, plain, not too much salt. No, it's very tasty. Mm -hmm.
So we are now inside the bazaar and just like the one in Tabriz, this is a very big one. It's called the Tehran Grand Bazaar and there are so many rows and columns of streets. It's like Except a little Excel, like an Excel sheet. And uh, this line that we're walking in right now, it's all about jewelry on one side and clothes on the other. And if I compare this bazaar to the one in Tabriz, that was like more colorful and more vibrant. Yeah, yeah the roof is all blackened out yeah. and it looks old. That's uh, also because the, the bazaar in Tabriz is a uh, is of great historical importance, so there you definitely see it in a much better condition. Here it is, it is big, but I guess it's uh, too confusing for us as we are walking around. And the alleys are smaller. Yeah, but it's very confusing to navigate this because it's going this way, this way. So we're just sticking to one path. One straight road. It'll be easier when we come out. I'll come to the Chaddi area. Oh. And even inside this bazaar, you can find a few cafes where they sell coffee, tea, and a few snacks. And it looks less busier than the Tabriz bazaar, don't you think so? Yeah. It's definitely very packed, so crowded. And this is supposed to be like working hours on a weekday and we thought that people would be busy in their office in the afternoons and the city wouldn't be as crowded but no we were wrong. It's very very crowded like I didn't imagine Iran to be this crowded. It's huh. actually a big task to just walk from this side of the street to the other side. Yeah so right now we are walking up north from uh, Golistan another set of monuments so along the way Maybe we'll get to see more of the city but it looks like this is like the trading heart of the city so there are many businesses, many shops, uh, of course many two-wheelers moving with things on them. It reminds us of uh, city market in Bangalore. We even have those trolleys where they put luggage in front and then they just push it on the road just like how we have in Bale Pet, Chik Pet and all. Yeah. And uh, you can find a lot of cafes and uh, small restaurants selling a lot of food. So and if you want to buy something, this is the perfect place to shop. There's uh, like the food prices are very reasonable. The the falafel that we had was around one dollar, less than a dollar. And in here in the bazaar, you have a lot more cafes which sell uh, shawarma, uh, pizza, and uh, of, of course there are local Iranian dishes too. But since it's mostly meat and we don't have a friend with us today, we're not able to really identify. The language barrier is definitely a big struggle. Yeah. But to make life a little more easier for both of us, I learned Pash Persian numbers. So I know how to write 1 to 9, 1 to 10. Yeah, so and I can read numbers and like get to know if you know, people who are selling us something are cheating us or not. <laughs> and so far nobody has cheated thankfully. But uh, we were advised by our friends to be very watchful of uh, who we interact with. So that's a thing to remember. Ooh. So what we just saw on the floor now are actually advertisements that people stick. The, so even when you are walking, they are trying to sell you something. Yeah, so this is the first time I've seen ads on the floor. It's actually a very simple idea. And, uh, Especially on roads like this where you have to look down and walk. Yeah. And uh, we also see a lot of vehicles here. What we've learnt about the, the car and bike situation here is that there are very few companies that sell cars and very few companies that sell bikes. Two of the bike companies are Indian, that's Bajaj and TBS and uh, the car companies are mostly French if not Iranian but the new dominating player in the market is Chinese. 
So Chinese also seem to be here in the scooter business. But I think from what we see, Iranian motorcycle brands are quite popular by themselves, followed by Indian brands. So Bajaj and PVS seem to be doing a great job. We also found a few Vespas, but it turns out they are just copies of the original Vespa. Uh, and they sell for about, about $1,800 to $2,000. Uh, the Bajaj Pulsar and TVS Apache also sell for about the same price. The original Vespa though, is also available here and it costs upwards of six thousand dollars so it's really expensive and now it feels like we're walking on our India road because there are a lot of stores selling books so this is the sign of it being an Islamic Republic here Iran. So the symbol represents the Islamic status. Yeah, bro. So we go. Yeah. So we have just come inside Negaristan Palace. It's uh, on the eastern side of the city and this palace actually dates back to the 1800s, like 1885 or so. So uh, the reason why it's called Negaristan is because uh, it was used as sort of a summer capital workplace even though it was far outside the city center back in that time. And eventually as uh, the city began to expand further and further, this uh, became sort of a, a, a place, a getaway place of some kind that even in the busyness uh, there was a place for art and murals and uh, where culture sort of flourished. Right now we are walking inside this garden. I see green grass everywhere which is perimetered with trees. The weather is really nice. I see like brick buildings and which have windows. And all these windows have glass paintings or coloured glasses on them. Yeah, it's like stained glass, the yeah. kind you see in the church, Churches. but it's uh, in the Islamic style, like a dome. There are two types of ticket for this. One ticket allows you to just roam around in the garden. And the other ticket allows you to roam around in the garden and also go into the museum. So we just we, chose to just walk around. So we've just chosen the garden tickets because this itself is so beautiful. And the palace at the very centre looks incredible uh, it looks sort of like you know an old university yeah. building and that makes sense because after this stop being the sum palace it became a, a place of teaching and the teaching was for farming agriculture and this these kind of uh, sciences so it almost feels like we have walked into an ancient university of some kind it, it almost feels like we have walked into IAMB yeah. part of its era because it's the same kind of colors and walls etc. I just picked up this bag of chips and it tastes exactly like Doritos. It's a Mexican flavor and it only costs 50 bucks. I know. So 30, 38,000 Toman, which uh, after all these months of buying expensive chips, it's so nice to be here with cheap chips. But it tastes real good. So many packets. Now me is confused. 
Do you remember how much this was? This was around less than a dollar, right? Less than a dollar for sure. In India, this is definitely hundred bucks. It's about half a dollar. back home uh, to our host house and just walking through this residential neighborhood as you can see it's so similar to pretty much everywhere else in the world that then makes us forget that Iran is actually <laughs> in such a you know thing in the world right now politically. All the houses here are really close and the roads are a little more narrower and all the cars are parked on the street yeah. Iran, Tehran is really crowded in that way. That is true. And, uh, and every gate has like so much security detail. There are like uh, punch code uh, wall, yeah. like punch code pass, what is that called? There are pass locks codes. with that uh, pass code shiz. And on the way, we just stopped at the supermarket to pick up some curd and water. And guess how much we paid for half a kg of curd? Yeah. One, one and a half liter of water and a uh, bag of chips. And a small uh, jam, jelly no, jam. Jelly, didn't buy. I put it back. I think it might be in. Well, anyways, <laughs> we paid about one dollar. <laughs> so that's pretty crazy. So now that we are back, uh, we have to plan our onward journey in this country. We still don't know exactly which cities we want to go, but ballpark uh, we want to visit is Fahan. So that is further south from here. I'm excited to go to Hormuz Island. So with that, uh, we'll see you in the next vlog. Bye. Bye.